time to the Quick Speed Shop, I'm going to be reviewing my brand new Miller Multimatic 215. Alright, so after years of struggling in my old uh, machine, I decided to make the investment in the new welder and I bought this unit here. It's a Miller Multimatic 215. It can do stick, MIG, and DC TIG. This machine retails for $1,615, but there's a $200 mail-in rebate through Miller that's good through, I think, uh, July 15th of 2019. So this machine basically cost me uh, $1,450 plus tax, so about $1,500. And like I said, I don't have the TIG torch option with it, but the TIG uh, torch which gives you a second, second regulator for your shielding gas and a TIG torch and you can get an optional foot pedal control is about another $400 so uh, roughly with tax you're looking at just under $2,000 for a machine that can do up to 3 8 steel uh, stick, MIG or TIG so I think it was a good machine let's go ahead and check it out just remember here at the Quick Speed Shop, I'm putting out new videos every Wednesday and Saturday, so there's always something exciting going on. Go ahead and hit the button to subscribe over there, and uh, thanks for watching. So, I picked this up yesterday from the welding supply shop. I got the welder just like this, uh, with the uh, MIG torch on it, and the power cord and the gas hooked up. And I got a big bag of accessory action here. This kind of counts as an unboxing. We'll call it an unbagging. So we got your uh, your destructions here. Oop. Dropping stuff already. So we get for instructions. You get the uh, the manual for the machine, the manual for the MIG gun torch, and then uh, a book on the regulator here for the gas. So I've already read through this a couple times. You get your registration form. Here, you've got the uh, the stick stinger in here and the ground clamp. Got a couple of Velcro cable ties. The machine comes with a two-pound uh, Hobart. Uh, I think it's thirty thousandths wire. Yeah, thirty thousandths solid wire. I went ahead and I bought another spool, ten-pound spool of the thirty thousandths wire. Comes with four tips. There is no tip in the gun when you pick it up. You have to put the tip in it. And then a couple of keychain uh, sheet metal guides that show you the thickness of uh, sheet metal and wire size. That's pretty cool for Miller. So let's take a closer look at the machine. This machine can do flux core, MIG stainless, stainless steel uh, with a 25% carbon dioxide mixed gas. You can use 100% uh, carbon dioxide gas. You can get an optional spool gun for aluminum and then you can do the TIG option here so when we turn this on we'll see all these things open up but you and you have your auto set features here where you can set pick like eighth inch steel um, and thirty thousandths wire and it'll automatically set the uh, the voltage in the amp in the wire feed but you still have local control here with these dials if you want to dial it in a little bit um, in front of the machine here you've got the MIG gun sticking out the front Here, you got a nice MIG, MIG torch, nice Miller qual high quality option. Here's your tip. See, I got to put the tip inside here. It pushes on and stops, so it's always in the right spot. Now the booklet shows you the positive and negative feeds up here for the TIG and the uh, stick torches, and also for your polar polarization of the MIG gun. So it shows you, for example, here if you're using TIG. The TIG torch is uh, negative and the ground lead is positive. Stick is the opposite. The ground is negative and the stick stinger is positive. But since I'm using this for a MIG machine, I'm going to go here and the uh, MIG torch, this lead here plugs into positive and then the ground lead plugs into the negative. So this is like a cam lock system. There's a detent on the top of the lug here, it simply goes in and turn it clockwise and the lock's in there nice and tight. A 
liberate the uh, stinger in the ground here. And here's the the ground lead, which will plug here into the negative side the same way the positive side. Just stick it in there and turn it till it stops. So now we got it set up with the MIG gun and the uh, ground tail. Here's a lead for the stick welder. I don't have any stick uh, any stick rods to, to show how this works, so I'm just going to set this aside for now because I bought this to be a MIG machine. So it's nice. I always have the option if you want to do some stick welding, you've got the stick torch right with it. Let's go ahead and we'll look in the inside of the machine. First of all, we've got the power cord here. This is a uh, I believe it's a 6-50P uh, NEMA plug for this is for 220, you know, 240 single phase voltage. But this machine is multi multi uh, voltage where you can run on 120 or 220. So I don't have the correct uh, 6-50R receptacles wired up in my garage yet. But I don't have those parts yet. So what we're going to do first is convert this to the 110 plug, and I'm going to run it off the 20 amp. Uh, 110 outlets in my garage here. So simply open up the side of the machine and over here is the 110 plug. It's set for a 15 amp plug. So I'll plug in anybody's wall sockets and what you do is unscrew this here and the plug should pull straight off. You got four pins here, they're indexed so it only goes one way. This plug goes back in the machine. I'll clip it back in there in a second. But you take your 115, your 15 amp uh, 120 volt plug. Let's see. I got to line this up correctly. Just plug that on there and run this back down in. I'm ready to plug into my uh, my. Outlet, wall outlet, so I can run this on a 110. So I stashed the plug in here with the Velcro. Um, here's your wire feed, where your spool goes. Your machine here. This, I believe, is your, your plug-in for the control for the TIG torch. And here's one thing you want to watch out for. It's in the instructions, but when I got this, this is your uh, knob that that makes the tension to hold in the, uh, the MIG torch. Make sure the MIG torch is seated all the way up against this aluminum face. There's a there's a, a collar on the uh, the brass part of the torch, and mine was slid out a little bit, and it shows in the destruction. So you got to have it all the way up tight. So I had to do that, and you'll see if your uh, your inner liner for your TIG gun, your uh, MIG gun, is right up close to the wire spool. It's pushed in all the way correctly. Wire size. You can change your uh, wire size here on the uh, drive wheel. I've got to set the 30 thousandths right now, but you simply push in on the spring and you can turn this here. It's set to 24 thousandths, which moves it to the inner groove. And uh, there's a, a groove on the back that's uh, serrated. That's for your flux core wire. But I've got to set the 30, 30, 35 thousandths wire. We're going to be running 30 thousandths wire in here. Your, uh, when you put your wire in, your wheel comes down and your tension goes here. They have tension. Uh, gauges here one one to four the manual suggests going to two first so we'll try that when we put the wire in another nice feature here is they give you the setup process for your uh, your auto set is here on this on this four on this uh, paper and you open it up and it gives you all your common uh, conversion factors for wire size material th material thickness type of wire type of welding process you're using so that's a nice little feature that Miller added here, right inside the welder. And it also shows you polarity for uh, your work leads. Okay, I've gone and set the welder up on my welding cart. I can tell you it's a lot lighter than my old transformer machine. And I've put the 10 pound spool of 30 thousandths wire on here. I fed it through the, the wire holder, the wire feeder, into the gun and I've put the 30 thousandths tip on because it's 30 thousandths wire, so there's the 30 thousandths tip in the gun. I've also gone ahead and hooked up my gas here, which I'll flip around so you can see it on the other side. But it is ready, I believe, to turn on 
turn it on for the initial initial fire up here. So let's uh, spin this thing around. We'll take a look at. It. You can see on the gauges here. I've hooked it up. I've got uh, about 1,600 psi left in my bottle because the bottle is fairly new. Uh, there's no gas on the regulator yet because I haven't turned the machine on to get gas into the into the uh, MIG torch. But let's go around to the front and we'll turn the machine on and see what that looks like and then we'll come back and set the gas pressure up here at about about 30 on the gauge. Alright, I've got the machine plugged into the wall. I'm going to go ahead and flip the power switch on the back here. We'll turn it on and see what happens. Aha! So, here you can see it comes on automatically. It's already set to uh, MIG seal uh, C25, which is what I have, but if you want to change your process, you can go over here and you can switch 100% CO2 shielding gas here is what that would be. But it knows that I don't have that, and maybe it doesn't. All right, here we go. So it's set up for that, and you can also do, if you want to do MIG aluminum, which would be with an optional spool gun, you would know that. It tells you how to hook that up quickly on here. Let's go back to MIG C25. 75% argon, 25% CO2, which is what I have in the tank. Shows you the polarity of the hookup, which we have here. We're hooked in positive for the torch and negative for the ground. 30 thousandths wire. Right now it's set to 8 inch steel, steel uh, material thickness. I want to try welding a piece of sheet metal, so we're going to go down, I think, to a piece of 16 gauge. So click minus here, 14 gauge. You can see how the numbers change. 16 gauge. So this is your wire feed per second. Uh, I believe 223. And then your voltage here. 30 thousandths wire. Now when I turn it on, I heard gas leaking. Um, I never checked the, the connection on the back of the machine. It was just threaded in there at the at the, the welding supplier. So I've got to go ahead and i got to tighten up my uh, rear gas lead here first. Tighten that into the machine and then uh, we'll pick up a piece of steel and we'll try to weld some 16 gauge together with this. I went a little fast on that, so I got a lot of bead build up here. It was starting to be all right there, but I went too fast when I did that. On the back side, though, it's got it's got penetration through. You can see where it penetrated good on the back. So let me slow down a little bit. I'm gonna practice this for a little while and see how I can get it going here, make some nice welds. I did some more practicing, and what I found was I didn't have the auto set set right. I had uh, both gauges were, both dials were over like this, and it was down on the scale like this, and I cranked them up here in the center. You can see it goes to a, a little target. So both your gate, your uh, dials need to be vertical to have the auto set set to the correct uh, auto set feature. And then I, I welded some more 16 gauge. We'll take a look at that. Like I said, I'm not a professional welder. I'm not stacking dimes. I'm more like throwing them on the table, but it's got my welds hold together and they stick. They're not the prettiest, but I'm not ever claimed to be a professional. After setting the auto set and getting it set and dialed in, I was able to make some better welds. I uh, uh, overlapped two pieces of 16 gauge and welded them up nice here. Um, I did a, a seam here, which you can see has plenty of penetration on the bottom side. And uh, it laid down pretty good. I've still got to practice with this thing, but I laid down pretty good here, and then I did a piece of vertical standoff here with a 90 degree, welded one edge that they came out looking pretty nice, and I did the same thing on the other side, laid it in there. I have a hard time seeing. I've got a cheap Harbor Freight helmet, and it's not the best for seeing. I've I really got to invest in a better helmet because I, I have a hard time seeing the the end of the torch uh, very very clearly. So uh, some of this is not being able to see well, but I'm going to go ahead and keep practicing with it. 
and uh, see how I can get it dialed in. But I'm liking how it welds. It welds super nice. There's hardly any splatter. It sounds super crisp. Um, I love how the machine's on, but it doesn't make any noise until you start drawing an arc and then it runs the fan. It's a real nice machine. I'm really, really happy with it. All right, so, so far, so good to this Multimatic Miller 215 uh, combination stick, MIG, and TIG machine. I'm just getting it dialed in so I know how it feels and how it works, but I like the, I like the auto set feature. It's real easy to change, change to eighth inch. Then you can adjust your wire feed and your voltage either way, but you straight up and down is set to target up here. And it's the machine is lightweight, it's compact, it's easy to deal with, everything's laid out and a good feature. It fits my welding cart perfectly. I like this, the, uh, the trigger on it is real nice on the gun, and it's got a good quality ground clamp on it. I'm super excited they get to use this machine and learn how to make a little bit nicer welds and become a better welder with a high quality welding machine. So that's it. A review of my new Miller Matic Multimatic 215. The first thing I did here is I made a new uh, piece for my welding cart to hang up all the cords here. And so I just used to lap, lay them around the machine and it was a big jumbled mess. So now I've got three uh, strap steel hangers here. I can hang the ground, the, the stinger, and the helmet. And I'm still going to make a, on the back, I'm going to build a, a, a plug on the back of the machine where I can plug the welder into the cart, and I'm going to have an extension cord to plug into the wall because the, uh, the cord on the machine is not that long. So the instructions say you can have up to 50-foot, 12-gauge extension cord. So I've got about a 10-foot cord that I used on the old welder. I'm going to put new ends on it, and it'll plug into a receptacle on the rear, and then it'll go to the wall. So I've even got my quick speed shop sticker on here, so I'm ready to go. But thanks for watching the review of my new welder. I hope to get lots of years out of using this here at the quick speed shop, welding all kinds of things together. And it should be a really good machine, and I'm happy with the purchase. So uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm putting out new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Um, there's always something to look forward to, car projects, tool reviews like this. And as always, we'll see you again at the quick speed shop.